Hi guys, and welcome back to The Carla Garrick Show. Today is episode 29. I know I don't beam in every week, but I'm doing my best, and I'm really, really grateful to be back here with you. I've been doing a lot of traveling, living, life, busy, all of that great stuff. But today, I want to talk to you a little bit about this Mark Stebbins Center that's being proposed on the West Side. Perhaps you've heard about it, maybe you haven't, but if you live in West Manchester, or frankly, if you live anywhere in Manchester, or anywhere in New Hampshire, I think this is a really really important discussion that we need to be having. Because the way I'm looking at this is it it's actually sort of em, uh, embellic, blemic, blah, that's not a word. Um, it's an example of the problem that I perceive with big government. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about it. I actually had an op-ed that came out in Monday's paper, um, which many of you may have seen in the Union Leader, which of course is the largest newspaper here in New Hampshire. But the long and the short of it is the following. Here's sort of the, the basic facts. There is a plot of land. It's 4.2 acres. Uh, it's next to Parkside Middle School on the west side. It is a uh, parcel of land that is on five dead-end streets. The speed limit is 10 miles per hour. Uh, it's next to the park. Kids play there. And there is a community garden that was built out over the past few years. There are raised beds. People come from all over the city to do their gardening there. And, um, and so unbeknownst to anyone in the area that actually lives there, the city kind of did this sketchy, shady, seemingly, uh, backroom deal where they simply declared the park surplus and said it can be sold for $600,000, which is uh, the low est range of the entire, uh, you know, the, the estimate that they got on the property. And um, they just declared it surplus without saying what the criteria were. Uh, they're now going to sell that land to a yet to be formed, I believe, a nonprofit called the Mark Stebbins uh, Center. And uh, they're going to build a 40,000 square foot building on a parcel of land that uh, only that 40 percent is so steep you can't even build on it. So anyway, the mistake or the issue is not only that it's actually in my literal backyard, um, it's also that I believe the way this was handled is not moral, ethical, correct or frankly, the way that we should all be treating each other. So I'm going to read you my op-ed and then um, just sort of unpack some of the issues. Um, of course, for everyone watching back home, please know I am running uh, for a state house this time. I've run for state senate in the past. Uh, the insiders, the establishment, the elites uh, kind of said, oh, we all want Lou D'Alessandro to die in office. Uh, so I decided I wasn't going to try and compete for the Senate. What I'm going to do is be in the House and see if I can affect changes there. So please do keep me in mind uh, if you're looking at candidates uh, as the election season sort of hots up. Uh, but first and foremost, let's start with uh, a case against the Mark Stebbins community center at Parkside. Uh, and then actually on the, on, you can find this article both in the newspaper, but also online at unionleader.com. Uh, and there I love the heading they gave it, which was paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Um, what defines a community? Is it a location, a value system, a bit of both? Should something be called a community center when the people who live there don't want it? Can you claim to be building community when you fail to inform the abutters, the people who would be most impacted? The Board of Aldermen and Mayor Joyce Craig recently voted to sell 4.2 acres of public parkland next to Parkside School in West Manchester for $600,000, the original quote was $6,000 to $750,000, to a private entity called the Mark Stebbins Community Center. At the Aldermanic meeting, 14 individuals spoke a bit against the, the center at this location. Eight spoke in favor, 
all directly affiliated with the city or the project. A week prior, the project manager, Janine uh, Toussaint, shut down an informational session at Parkside School where about 100 neighbors and gardeners showed up when it became clear that we were not happy. Abutters were not informed until the sale of intent was signed. Let me repeat that. The literal people who own homes and pay their property taxes where the center is being proposed were not told about the plans until the deal was done. Thank you to Joe Kelly Levasseur for voting against the surplus recommendation and to Ed Sapienza for stating at the aldermanic meeting that an RFP process should have been followed. At the bridge meeting, we were told we're not legally required to inform abutters, to which my neighbor, an actual abutter, responded, we all know what's legal isn't always what's right. Do you think government should change the nature of your neighborhood without talking to you first? Do you think it's right for one group of special interests the nonprofits and the mayor's donors pushing this agenda, let's call them Group A, to help another group of special interests, the beneficiaries of the largesse, Group B, without telling the residents who bear the brunt of these actions, Group C. Is this good governance? No. In a nutshell, it's exactly What is wrong with government? Everyone thinks it's okay to bleed Group C, the honest, hardworking, taxpaying property owners. We're tired of this. The park is located next to Parkside School. Park side. Five dead-end streets lead into it. The speed limit is 10 miles per hour. Over the past few years, a community garden was built called Manchester Grows, where I donated my tomato plants earlier this year. 40% of the property is on a steep hill, not suitable for building, and they're proposing a 40,000 square foot building plus parking, i.e. they are going to pave paradise and put up a parking lot. In order for Parks and Rec to declare the site surplus, it must be demonstrated that the land is not being used for any purpose and that the sale is in the public interest. Based on the documents that I've received from the uh, city so far for my right to know requests, which, you know, is a fair amount of stuff, um, I have not seen any evidence that this criteria was met. Most of the letters that have been submitted are identical or very boilerplate, and they simply state that the land is surplus and that taking it's in the public interest, but they don't give the reasons. They don't explain why. One might even ask, who's the public? Apparently, though, it's no one in Group C. This park is currently being used for a community garden and green space where children play, Only one person from Manchester Groves, Amara Tamzarin, signed a letter to relocate the garden. Several other Manchester Grove volunteers that I've contacted said they don't support the destruction of their garden. One gardener who visits from the east side asked, while clutching fresh basil that I could smell, why the organizers of this project had not put up notices on the fence to inform them of their plans. This is a good question, and one that indicates the claimed good faith efforts to involve the community doesn't seem to be the whole truth. I've requested additional information from other sites considered. They were looking at West High, something on 2nd Street, and especially the plot of land owned by the Housing Authority in Ward 12 near Rock Rimmon, which seems more suitable. Erin George Kelly recused herself at the aldermanic vote, citing a conflict of interest. So I'd like to know what that is. Look, no doubt 
Everyone is committed to doing good for the children of the West Side. But let me be clear, you cannot start with questionable, unethical behavior and expect good to follow. The city and the mayor's friends need to apologize for their disrespectful railroading and let's start over together. If this project is such a good idea, then you should be able to persuade the majority of abutters that it is. If, on the other hand, you know, like I do, that over the long term, this rushed decision will depress our property values between 10 and 30 percent, and I actually think that's conservative, while also downshifting the costs of services provided to this tax-free property onto us, the surrounding homeowners, while also inviting increased crime and homelessness into our safe community, then perhaps the reason they fail to inform us is because they know exactly what they're doing and they don't want to confront our rightful outrage. Look, we can debate what the best solutions to solve society's problems are, but I know this for certain. When you screw over one group of people to benefit another group, you're not doing good despite what you tell yourself. You don't get to single-handedly decide who must make sacrifices for the greater good without getting permission from the people you're demanding the sacrifice from. I genuinely hope we can find a workable solution, not only for the connected and the people who will receive the services, but also for those of us who live next to the park, who grow our vegetables there, and who pay our property taxes for our still safe streets. People who would like to get involved with Save Parkside Park, we've created an informational website at parksidepark.org where you can get links to our petition, our Facebook group, and the dates coming up that you need to get involved with. Um, so that, that was my original op-ed. Uh, it was tweaked and, and edited a little bit uh, down, but it also now includes some information for calls of action. Now, you know, I just want to sit here a little bit because my issue is, you know, a lot of people have been like, Carla, this sounds awfully like nimbyism, and which of course stands for not in my backyard. So I can see how people would make that claim. But here's actually what's going on. This, in my mind, is a common law issue, right? So, so we talk about society, we talk about the greater good, we talk about building community, we talk about all these nice things. But my point is, how can you claim to be doing these things if you're actually like harming, actively harming, our property prices are gonna go down and our taxes are gonna go up. The nature of this very quiet neighborhood is going to change and, um, and it's gonna bring in uh, health services, which, you know, I, I, I just, I question that this is the right approach to solve some of the problems, right? So I don't think you can do good by doing bad and then just glossing over it and kind of just pretending like, ah, uh -uh, let's just pretend like we didn't do this bad thing, right? It's kind of like, it's a dramatic example I'm willing to grant, but, you know, it was recently the, the, um, anniversary of the bombings in Japan, right? America is the only country that has ever dropped atom bombs, has ever used nuclear weapons against anyone else. And the way people explain this horrific thing that happened away is they just kind of go, well, something worse would have happened if we hadn't done this bad thing. Now, bear with me. That's bullshit. That is absolute nonsense, and I can prove it to you. Unless you're a time traveler, or you're some kind of soothsayer, or you're Nostradamus, or you're some crazy lady just predicting the future, you don't actually know what's going to happen. We can make some best guesstimates, but for the most part, actually most of the data we're generating at this stage is just junk. And I'll tell you, it's because... The models work by data in, suppositions in, give you the suppositions and the data out. So 
the whole process is a little broken. But Unless you're a time traveler, you can't actually claim that X prevented Y. And the test is to do the following. If we looked at life as just a movie, and then we said, okay, we're going to stop the movie right now, like right after they dropped the atomic bomb. At that moment, who's the good guy or the bad guy? Now you have to judge the actions. So you have to say the bad guy in that scenario is the person dropping the atomic weapon and murdering tens, if not hundreds of thousands of innocent women and children and men, you know, they get a rough deal. I think we shouldn't be killing anyone, not even the dudes, okay? So, so this notion can be carried forth to something as simple as this situation with the park. Because basically what's happening is people are saying, well, we're gonna put this in and it's gonna create these better outcomes down the line. So let's test that supposition. Um, property prices, typically where these kinds of places are built, don't go up, they go down and the tax burden goes up. So you're making the people who live there poorer. So if we take a fairly safe, uh, residential, quiet neighborhood, again, five dead end streets, and we put something in that makes the neighborhood poorer over time, which I think I can prove economically, then have we, have we done good? No, you've actually extended poverty. You've actually made something worse than it was before. And look, the people who criticize me say things like, I hate children, I, you know, uh, my nimbyism and all of that. That's not what this is. First of all, I don't hate children. I love children. I think they're the future. I think we should stop treating them like they're little idiots and, and be so risk averse with them. And, and I think we should give them more opportunities. In fact, I think the kids from the West Side should walk to the Boys and Girls Club on the east side. And I think that would actually make them better humans over time. We actually know the exercise would be good for them. We know the vitamin D from the sun would be good for them and all of that, but be that as it may. In one of these letters that I got from uh, the Right to Know request was a letter from a teacher who literally just said, well, we have to do it here because we, we're having a hard time hiring bus drivers. So let me ask you, do we think we should be spending 17, possibly $17 million? Or should we, um, I don't know, make the kids walk, figure out an Uber gift card, or find a bus or a shuttle that can move them around? Let's talk a little bit about the numbers of the people who are gonna be impacted. So based on what I've seen floating around, uh, it's about 100, 107 children was the number I heard. Uh, being that that are currently going from the uh, west side to the east side boys and girls club. Okay, um, I believe looking at all the houses abutting and the people who would be influenced or directly impacted in the residential area on the five dead end streets, ten miles per hour with a community garden that is going to be ripped out where we are growing food, teaching people skills, actually doing useful things. Um, uh, is about 115 people. So just on the face of it, like some of this isn't making sense. So I want to know a lot of things. Um, I did want to address something. I think Kathy Sullivan had attacked me in some, some uh, op-ed also in the newspaper where she said that I make, um, uh, she said, when challenged, uh, frequent Republican candidate Carla Garrick opposes the proposed Mark Stebbins Center. It will be a nonprofit community center paid for entirely through charitable donations. That is incorrect. I have it on video admitted that this money is partly being funded by ARP American Rescue Plan funds. That is the money that they're printing out of thin air that makes us all poor, that makes gas double the price it's supposed to be, and that is gonna make your energy costs absolutely impossible to pay because they are literally decimating our economy. Okay, so it is not, first of all, so, so these are unfounded accusations that I'm making that I can literally prove on video are not true. So it's not, being entirely funded through charitable donations. That is an untrue statement. 
It is not being, uh, so being built on land purchased from the city. This was a backroom sweetheart deal in a non-public session where they took the lowest bid. There was no RFP given. What if other nonprofits want to do something there? What if I want to open up, I don't know, a, a, a kitchen uh, uh, to teach people what the vegetables were growing, how to cook their food? I don't know. Seems like we should have put it out to a competitive bid. So the interesting thing and something everyone needs to remember is sometimes how one person behaves informs a process. So by way of example, this is clearly something that is being railroaded through. And at every point so far, one person has said, whoa, 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 this doesn't seem entirely ethical. Maybe we need to like hold our horses here. So what are those moments? Those are the moments we need to look at as a true community and go, yeah, you know what? That's right. That's the right way to do it. We should do it that way. So the right way to do it was to inform the abutters before you signed the letter of intent. Now, someone had the audacity to actually say to us, um, uh, you know, what, what what's legal we all know what's le uh they they just said we're not legally required to inform you which is a dick move face it that's just who wants to behave like that is that like here's my question hey every city person who is pushing this if you lived next to a city park that had been there for a hundred years, that has a garden on it where children play, that one of the people who testified at City Hall is a veteran who said he literally bought his house there because he has PTSD and he needs green space around him. But his opinion doesn't matter. Just, just you know, this is how it's being situated. So, um, so they're saying, you know, we, so if you lived next to a park and I was mayor, Carla Mayor, and Carla Mayor goes, yeah, you know what, well, let's get together and we'll just, you know, have a little backroom deal. We'll get one of our friends to do the market price. We'll take the lowest price. We won't tell anyone. We'll do the signing. And then we'll have a meeting and be like, how dare you be outraged about the situation? Like, honestly, Honestly, not one of you who is supporting this would think if I was doing it to you that it was the right way to behave. So, basta. Let's let's stop with the nonsense and let's come up with a better approach. So I can tell you I know of several other sites where it would be much better to do this, including this morning when I was out with the dog at Rock Rimmon. I was like, why don't we do it at Col um, Colbert Park where there's, you know, the, one of the ball fields is entirely not maintained anymore. And that's next to another stretch of thing. There are only six houses on that dead end. There's only one dead end street. The speed limit's 30 miles an hour. So it's clearly already a better place than this proposed place. Um, I'm going to run out of time, but I did also want to mention here that, um, you know, it's it, they're, they're making claims that it's the Boys and Girls Club. Yes, that's true. But there will also be several other uh, nonprofits, including, you know, uh, Wayfair, uh, there's, uh, Boys and, uh, there's Boys and Girls Club, and then there are several health services clubs that, you know, I think we need to look at what kind of services these people are providing. And then um, they, they make claims that it's going to be for the underserved West Side. Now, I guess as a last point, I'd just like to point some things out. So we have these, these, these ideas coming in from out of state, right? These sort of crazy progressive ideas that just actually really do make society poorer. But and I can prove it. Look at Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, all the places where there's 100% Democrat control. The cities are out of control. Crime is out of control. Drug use is out of control. Um, bail people coming in and out, just letting criminals out on the street. It is undeniable that tolerance for these things is not the way to solve these problems. Okay, so... Um, Manchester is not a big city. I actually went and measured it. It takes me exactly five minutes to drive from the site they're proposing to the current Boys and Girls site. Five minutes. Let's say there's traffic. Let's say it's seven minutes. Oh my goodness, seven minutes to go from the uh, west side to the east side. Also, um, let's keep 
I mean, uh, these services are there. I think they can stay there. Maybe people can pump a little more money into that. I am under the possibly wrong impression, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that really the people from the east side are trying to push the problems that we are seeing on the east side onto the west side. And I feel like this, this, this taking of our park and our community garden is just, you know, the cherry on top. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm coming from for, for today. I guess your takeaway should be uh, there's a call to action. We will have another meeting that's being hosted by um, the Mark Stebbins Center people, the project manager, that will be on 816, so August 16th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Parkside which we'll have to rename, obviously, Parkside uh, Middle School. I ask everyone to come, bring your questions. I believe it's going to be limited to three minutes. Uh, you can submit your questions. If you want to find out more and get involved, go to parksidepark.org, and there's a Facebook group called Save Parkside Park. You can find it. Try and connect with me. Um, again, this isn't blatantly fighting anything that appears to be doing good. This is trying to teach people that actually you can't do good by doing bad when you start that way. That's all my time this time. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you guys again next week. Thanks so much. Bye.